be with me. I want to try and clear up some of these misunderstandings. Where's the clicker? Here it is. Click. Oh, it works for me. So if you're here at Pocona, you understand client-server databases. You, you, you get that. SQLite is a full-featured database engine like MySQL or Postgres or uh, you know, any of the thousands of others. But it's different in that it's an embedded database. It's not a separate application. You don't talk to it across a network. It's embedded in your application. It's just a library that links with your application. It writes directly to the disk. There's nothing between your application and the files on the disk. It's very small and compact. It has small, compact database files. It's portable. It's cross-platform. So when you write a database file on, say, a 64-bit big Indian or small Indian uh, processor, you can move that database file over to a 32-bit little Indian, a big Indian processor, and it works just fine. It's also very fast. Now, because it's embedded, sometimes people confuse SQLite with uh, other kinds of embedded data stores like uh, BerkeleyDB or RocksDB or LevelDB. These are a little bit different. SQLite is a full-featured database engine with a a complete query language, full implementation of SQL. These others are more of a storage engine. They're very powerful, they're very interesting things, but they're not a complete solution. They might have some support for transactions, but that, that support is a little bit difficult to um, use, and it's sometimes it's missing altogether. Also, they don't typically have support for concurrency control. With SQLite, uh, it, that's automatic. With the other embedded databases, uh, concurrency control is left as an exercise to the application developer. So as a result of this, SQLite is sort of positioned in between the low-level key-value store databases and the big client-server databases. It's a really uh, productive niche, and it's been picked up and used by countless applications. SQLite today is the default database engine in your smartphone, regardless of what type of smartphone you have. It's, uh, so there's billions, billions of uses in there. It's, it's used in web browsers. It's used in lots of, it's used in, in, in operating systems. Windows 10 requires SQLite 3 in order to boot up. A Mac, it doesn't have to have Windows uh, SQLite to boot up, but it won't do much unless SQLite's installed. Um, it's built into Python. It's in lots of common applications like iTunes and Skype and, and QuickBooks and Wikipedia. You know, if you flew here to this conference on an Airbus A350, it even had SQLite in the avionics of your airliner. And so, uh, you know, by virtue of the fact mostly that, that SQLite is uh, used in everybody's cell phone, it's one of the most widely used bits of software in the world. There are more copies of SQLite running today than there are copies of Linux. There are more copies of SQLite running today than there are copies of Windows. It, or, or there are more, there's more copies of SQLite running than there are Macs or iPhones. And you know, exact numbers are hard to come by, but it's pretty easy to argue that there are more copies of SQLite running today than there are all other database engines combined. I think that SQLite is probably the second most widely used bit of software in the world today after ZLive, the compression library. I think there's probably a few more copies of that running. So why is it so popular? Well, part of it is really easy to use. SQLite comes delivered as a single file of C code. It's just one file of code that you drop into your application and compile and use. Now, it is a big file, 200 lines, 200,000 lines of source code. And, and don't get the idea that we, the developers, edit a single big 200,000 line file. We have lots of little normal sized files, and then as part of the build process, they get munched together in one great big file. But that works out really well for you because the whole thing is in one great big file. The compiler is able to optimize uh, much better, do cross-procedure optimization because it's a single translation unit. But it's also very easy for application developers to drop this into a bigger system. They don't have to mess with complex make files. It's just a single file. Also, the database for SQLi is stored in a single file on disk. A single file for hundreds, thousands of tables, indices, uh, views, triggers. It's a very space efficient file. It doesn't take up a lot of space on the disk. And uh, it, it, because it's a single file, you can send a complete database to your friends and an email attachment, for example. It preserves the document metaphor. 
And you can call this file anything you want. There are no naming requirements. So people can use the file as an application file format, and you can put your own custom extensions on it. Another reason people really use SQLite a lot is it has very low dependencies. In a minimal configuration, the only library support it requires are things like uh, stir copy and mem move. It's very little. Now, in a typical build, you'll need a few more routines than these seven I've shown here. You probably also 